Welcome to the video tutorial on Data Viewer. This is the standard file that people will use to take a look at event, display, report files, manual sample files that uh, products like our DX Advanced, DX, and uh, this uh, Data Viewer functions very similarly to the Data Viewer that is also uh, ships with stuff like the MW100. So uh, whether you've got a CX, DX, DX Advanced, uh, MV, they're all, or even an MW, they're all going to use this uh, basic set of controls that come with this. The data viewer that ships with the MW100 is slightly different, but for all your DX, all your video-based recorders, they're going to use the data viewer that comes with DAC standard. So uh, to get to this, you just go Start, Program Files, go over to DAC standard and pick viewer. Uh, once you do you'll get this up on the screen and uh, now you can go ahead and uh, browse to your files and open them up and start playing with them. So if we go here we can go file, open, uh, we can pick a, a uh, here's an event file, here's a report file, here's a display file so I can pick a display file here And let's uh, just take a look at that again. So when we pick the uh, display file, we can see there's some statistics that come up right here. For example, it was done on a DX1000, what the serial number is, what the start time was, etc. And so I can go ahead, open it up. I can see I've got some basic data there. All right, that's just one file. Now say you have multiple files in that directory. You can go ahead and say link a previous file if there's a previous file. You can go ahead and link the next file if there's a next file. Or you could go ahead and link them all. And what this will do is that will go into that directory and find all the files that consecutively match up with each other and link them together. And so now I've got you know one long trend here that I can go ahead and play with. You can also see up at the top here it's got the various groups. Okay, these are the by default the groups that were actually set up on the recorder. If, uh, if I don't like how those are set up, I can always go up here to general display settings and go ahead and change the groups up, mix and match, do whatever I want in terms of editing them. And I can say, you know, what channels I want in each group, min and max scale, stuff like that. So I can really kind of display, change how this displays however I want and you can see we can have up to 50 groups here and you can give each group a name. So I'm not going to change anything for now but we can see we have four groups here and so kind of uh, going across these buttons here we're just gonna we're not gonna hit every option we're gonna hit the main ones today. We can see that's how I open a file that's how if I changed uh, how the groups and everything were ordered I could uh, save that now I can't actually change any of the actual data, I can just change how I'm looking at it. So the actual data is protected from people modifying it. If uh, later on we want to actually modify the data, we can't change the file itself, but what we can do is we can export the data to Excel. Okay, um, so there's copying, uh, there's uh, the general display settings where we could uh, change what we wanted to see. If I want to see alarms down at the bottom, I can go ahead and hit that and then down here what we'll see is if there was any alarm set up that happened in that period one of these four boxes would fill in just like you're allowed a uh, four alarm levels per channel uh, these kind of lines down here represent those so if I have an actual alarm that goes off you know oh, we can kind of see maybe something happened down there we had a little bit of alarm we can see we had another alarm there those will go ahead and fill in Okay, I can go ahead here, see if any of these guys, looks like none of those guys have alarm set for them. You know, if this GC status, any of those had alarms, we could see that. And once again, you know, if that guy had any. But it looks like the only thing that had alarm set up was this particular group. And we can see, oh, there's some alarm, there's another little bit of an alarm, another little bit of an alarm as we go by. Okay. Uh, what we can also do is we can put a mark on the screen that we can later go to. So what I do is I just click on the screen, and that puts my cursor on the screen. Then I can go over here and go ahead and put in a mark 
and call it whatever I want. And that'll go in. So now in the future, I can go ahead and uh, search on that. So I can go edit. I can go delete the mark, uh, append, basically editing the mark. I can go up here, search for marks. OK. I can go here and erase the cursor if I want to. All right, so now the cursor's gone. I can place it back wherever I want. Uh, moving over here, we can see I can zoom in. I can zoom out. OK. I can uh, go ahead and if I wanted to do user zones, uh, right now I don't have any set up, but if I go here and go edit, as soon as I do, you're going to see we're going to have little tabs here. And I can essentially click on that, drag it, make it a little smaller, make it a little there, change this, change that. Okay. By editing the zone, then I could just move over here, full zone, which takes everything to their full upper and lower limit. But then if I want to later go back to my user zone that I edited over here, I can just go ahead and click there. Okay. There I can go and edit again. There's the full zone. There's kind of uh, what we call uh, just a offset a little bit there. So they're not on top of each other. We call that slide zone. We can do auto zoning where each one, each point gets its own scale and they're kind of stacked. Or we can uh, not stack them, but just kind of stack the scale. See, we have one, two there. We got one, two, three there. Okay, we got three, four there. And we've got uh, a couple there. All right, so if we go back to our uh, full zone here, uh, what we can also do is, you know, say I don't want to see both of those at the same time, I can just go down here and remove one, remove another, okay? And now they're removed from the trend. And then I can add them back. All right. Uh, say I don't like that gray background, I can go over here, kind of slide it up, slide it down, change the background color a bit. Over here, grid color, I can also change the color of my grid. If uh, I want to get a little more d dense with my grid, I can go up here. Okay, so I can kind of change the density of my grid. Over here is for showing a, the graph like we're already showing. If I wanted to go ahead and show uh, it in more of a tabular format, I can go here and that'll show all the data. So once again, here's the time and date. Here's the min, max for each of those. I can change between my groups. And if I uh, scroll down, you see those little green bars? If we find any that are red in here, those would correspond like those. See those red ones there? That corresponds to when we had no arm there. And each one of those green bars there corresponds to, you know, when we had some type of alarm condition. Okay, so four levels of alarms, and we can see here level one alarm has gone off. Okay, so I can close that out. Uh, let's see, we can also take a look for people that like circular charts. We can go here, look at it in a circular chart. Okay, uh, we can also go over here and we can list all the alarms and we can list all the marks, including that new one that I just added in here called uh, lunchtime. Okay, and we can see what triggered those marks as well. Okay, as well as the time they happen. All right, so let's close that out. Now let's say I'm back to my uh, nice uh, regular trend here. Okay, so here we are back to my regular trend. And uh, say I wanted to put a cursor on the screen and I wanted the value of that cursor and maybe the exact time it happened, I can go over here and hit control. And that'll bring me up the information on it, like what time it happened, any alarms on it, what its value was. If I kind of go ahead and put two cursors on the screen and hit that control, then what it'll do is it'll show me the start time, it'll show me the end time, it'll kind of show me the difference in time, the difference in value. Okay, so we can go ahead and see that there. And then it has it for each channel. 
If I want to get rid of those cursors, I can go edit, erase cursor, and those cursors are now gone. Uh, if I want some statistics on this graph, I can go ahead, hit that, and it'll give me my min, max, point to point, mean, RMS. If I had a group here, I could also do the statistics. All right, so see, it's just doing it for that section there. Okay, edit. And uh, I can go ahead and erase the cursor, get rid of those. So I can also go ahead and print. Uh, let's see what other things that we can go here. We can go ahead and go kind of like move cursor each way to each kind of trigger or in this case alarm. Uh, let's see. Okay, we can do the same for marks. All the way back to my lunchtime here. All right, so that, that covers most of the basics of interacting with this. Uh, what we can also do is uh, we can go ahead and go, you know, do we want to do absolute time, relative time? So we can play, play a bit with time. Okay, we can change our scale, zoom in, zoom out. We talked about editing the scale over here. Let's see, uh, take a look, see if there's anything else that's interesting. Uh, convert here, this is good. So we could go to convert to Excel. We can say where we want to start, where we want to end. We can say what group or we could go down here and say what channels and then we could kind of say you know wh where do we want that file set so I could say you know like I don't know put it on my desktop and uh, I want it to be called uh, uh, my exported data okay and hit OK and it's going to go ahead and export that to Excel so I can go ahead and go file open desktop my exported data and there it is within Excel so we can see what version of DAC standard we were using we can go down here see stuff like times and stuff like that we can see our points their values the time Okay, so that's a quick way to get stuff to Excel. So I'm back here to this. You know, uh, what we can also do other than convert is uh, we can uh, close this out. We could also take a look at some other types of files here. So I could go ahead and open and I could say, well, maybe I want to take a look at a report file that my unit generates. So I open this up and it can give me some stuff on the uh, daily report there bit more information on it and then what's also neat here is it does a little bar graph here so it kind of shows you what was happening there all right we, we can also take a look at event files if we want here so here's just more data that's collected and once again just like the display files I can go ahead and link all my files together if I want you know, in this case, I don't really have anything that I can link, so nothing added on. But, you know, same thing when dealing with event files. You can move around and look. There's also a great manual that you can uh, download from our website that kind of goes through, like, you know, hey, uh, if I'm looking at a manual sample file, you know, that's kind of what a manual sample file look like. If I got T-log files, then I can go ahead and kind of take a look at the T-log files, and it breaks down all the little pieces there for you. So you know what exactly what you're looking at. You know, report files like we just looked at, it goes in here and it also kind of takes you through what I just went through, including, you know, some graphs. All right. So that pretty much covers the data viewer there. I hope that's uh, been useful for you. And uh, thanks for uh, watching.